Hello, and welcome to our app, Treat Your Shelf, created by Charlie, Clara, Joe, and me, Steve. We love paperbacks, people, and the planet. So we wanted to create an app that promotes social interaction, reading, and reusing, strengthening local communities and protecting natural resources in the process. Treat Your Shelf is a book swapping app designed to encourage reading and facilitate sharing amongst people from all walks of life without ever needing to pay a penny. Now it's over to Joe for a demonstration. Thanks, Steve. To use all the features of our app, you'll need to register an account. This can be done easily by entering a few details, such as your desired username, your email, your city, and the first part of your postcode. This will be done to roughly determine your location without requiring the use of geolocation, and this avoids any privacy concerns. Finally, enter your password, confirm it's correct, and when done, hit sign up. Then, you simply need to check your inbox to verify your email. Alternatively, if you already have an account, you can choose to log in and you'll be redirected to your bookshelf. In case you aren't initially sure how to use the app, you can click on the question mark icon at the top to be taken to our help page. This will provide you with an FAQ that contains some easy instructions to follow. If you wish to change some account details, click on the profile icon next to the help, and here you can change your avatar. You can also change your username. You can also request a password reset, or simply you can log out. Now, let's see how to add some books to your bookshelf. To begin, you first need to click the Add button, and here you'll be taken to our scanner. Hold your book's ISBN code to the camera, and our app will provide you with a list of potential matches. Click Add Book, and you'll see a confirmation message where you can either choose to scan another book, or you can go back to your bookshelf. Your book will now be viewable on your bookshelf for other users to see and request swaps. To find a book you would like to receive yourself, select the Search button at the bottom. Here, you can either refine the search using a book's name or author. Alternatively, you can scroll down and select any user's book. View the book to be given some further details, as well as information about the book's owner, their location, and how far away they are from you. If happy, select Request Swap and confirm your choice. This will initiate a chat between yourself and the book's owner for you to arrange the swap. In the Exchanges section, book owners have the option to either accept or reject an incoming swap request. If accepted, the user receiving the book simply needs to mark that the book has been received and your bookshelf will be updated with the new book. As you can see, the book has now been added. That's our demo. Now let's go to Clara to find out about some of the tech choices we made for the back end. Treat Yourself uses a combination of relational and non-relational databases. We used Postgres to design and build a relational database to store our user, book and book exchanges data. This allowed us to search and query our database quickly and easily, as well as keeping track of all book swaps. We used Connect to communicate with our database and make promise-based queries to our REST API, which was built using Express. Our API was tested throughout using Jest, following test-driven development principles. We then hosted our backend with Heroku so we could begin querying it from our front end. Since we also needed to use a real-time database to store non-relational data, the conversations between users, we used Firebase Firestore for Treat Your Shelf's chat function. Having only previously worked with SQL, learning to use a NoSQL database was initially a challenge for us, but after some spiking we were able to get this up and running. Finally, we decided to utilise another Firebase feature, authentication. Again, a new challenge, but this integrated seamlessly with React. It provided us with individual user data, such as unique IDs which we used for our chat function, and it allowed us to keep all sensitive data secure in one place. We were then also able to use these unique IDs with our Postgres database. Now let's talk to Charlie about our front-end technologies. Since we planned on making a progressive web app and wanted to make use of reusable components, we decided on React as our front-end framework. We learned how to use React hooks for efficient state management and utilised context for Firebase authentication and to provide a theme for our app. 
A key feature is the React Webcam Barcode Scanner. Without this, users would have to manually input their book data. The barcode scanner was challenging to set up, but once operational, it was simple to integrate into our code, connecting directly to the Google Books API. This ensured a smooth and intuitive user experience. Two further node libraries, Geocode and Geolib, allowed us to implement a user's location. When users sign up, Geocode converts their city and the first section of their postcode into a set of coordinates that are then stored on our backend database. Geolib then takes these coordinates and calculates the distance between two users. This allows users to see the distance of a book relative to them without revealing any information about a user's exact location. We wanted to keep a sleek and uniform theme throughout our app. Material UI made styling efficient and allowed us to store our theme as a context which we used in all components. Now over to Steve to talk about any issues that we faced during the process. During the planning phase, we wanted to use Leaflet.js to plot users' locations on a map. However, while spiking, we realized this wouldn't be possible. So instead, we decided to use Geocode, Geolib, and the Google Maps API. This was not without its own challenges, as Google Maps did not integrate seamlessly with our app. So after breaking off to do some research on documentation and watching tutorials, we mobbed together to solve this issue giving us the functionality we needed. This flexible approach, researching solo, then mobbing together to implement solutions, also proved effective elsewhere in our app when troubleshooting our barcode scanner while using local connections, a process that required SSL certificates which were not straightforward to use. We held daily morning stand-ups and used the Trello Kanban board to plan each day, split user stories into tickets, and assign tasks to team members. A different team member led the meeting each day. We also had a daily roundup to make sure we were on track and to troubleshoot any issues that arose. Rotating pair programming was used throughout the development process, but we also broke off to research particular documentation and we mobbed together where necessary to find solutions to roadblocks. This is the end of our presentation. We hope you enjoyed finding out about Treat Your Shelf. Thanks for watching.